If you have decided to go with the primary interface of Active Inspire, there are a couple of differences um, in the layout and, and the way to use some of the um, functionality or tools of this interface that I'll just go through with you now. One of the first things you might notice is that in your browsing pane or your browser here, you have two icons less. So you're missing the first two icons that Studio has at the top, which is your page browser and your resource browser. And that is because they are on your toolbar instead. So over here you can see the icon for the resource browser and here is the icon for the page browser. So if I just click on that there, um, you'll see at the moment I've got a flip chart open with five pages and I can simply jump between the pages and I can reorder the pages exactly as I could in my studio version but instead of everything being vertical it's just horizontal down in this little tray here. The idea behind that is that this software is really designed for very young children um, and they might be height challenged even with um, a height adjustable stand they might not be able to reach all the way up here and so they could reach the icons here instead on the toolbar um, and they could be accessing what they need here. The resource browser there's one little uh, sneaky thing to know once the, uh, you or the children have selected the icon here, at first glance it appears there's nothing there. Okay, That's because you have to know to click on this very small little upwards pointing arrow. Okay, And as soon as you've done that, here is your My Library, here is your Shared Library, and we have access to all of our resources that we always did. Okay, And we just pull them up and use them as we always have. Okay, so once again, those resources are now in the, there we go. Those resources are accessible in the tray at the bottom instead of in the browser over here on the left. Um, and you need to access them with this little arrow there. Okay. Um, Something else that's a little bit different about the um, primary version, let's turn to a page that's a little bit less colourful. If you select your pen tool on Active Inspire Studio Edition or the Studio Interface, when you've selected your pen, you then select the colour and size of the pen up here on the toolbar and there's a slidey scale so you can have literally 100 sizes of pen. Down here um, in the tray, you'll notice that when I select the pen tool, I only have six pen sizes here. They're all good handwriting sizes. Here's the fattest, and here is the thinnest. Okay. Underneath, here are the colors of pen that I can select. All right. Just like if we had the colors in our color palette on our toolbar. And over on the side, I have four blank color palettes and that is for me to right click in and choose a different color okay and of course I've got the whole spectrum if I wish to have a very specific color like so okay and it'll pop it into there for me so you've got access to change four colors at one time of your own choosing over here you have three highlighters all right three different fatnesses of highlighter very fat thinner and of course a medium sized one and you've got three erasers all right I would probably recommend always just using the fat eraser unless you've used a really really tiny skinny pencil the fill tool if you click on the paint bucket fill tool to change the color of something on your page or in in fact your page background color um, the colors are down here here is your normal color palette to choose from works as per normal and of course you've got those four color palettes to swap into more specific colors if you would prefer. Overall those are mainly the differences. I'll just select on the tools. You'll notice the icons for the tools are somewhat different. 
Um, if you hover over any of the tools there, it tells you what they are if you're not sure. The sound recorder, I think, is an interesting choice of microphone image. Um, everything works exactly the same. You've got access to all of the tools that you have on the studio side. You just now look down the bottom. Now, I can roll along or back to see more tools and, of course, more resources in the resource library. You use these little arrows as well. So, same software, different look and feel. This is the active primary look and feel. And remember that if you want to swap back to the studio look and feel, you're going to need to click on View, Dashboard. On the left hand side, you go to Configure on your dashboard, and then you tick the little tiny tick box that says launch next time using the studio look and feel and of course if you're on the studio software wanting to swap to the primary side then it would say launch next time using the primary look and feel then we have to shut the entire software down and restart it and we are good to go in the studio version again